Well, hi, this is Bob, and we're getting ready to take a look at section 3.5. And I think of um, um, I think this is a section that we've been working toward in the uh, in chapter three because it introduces the idea of drawing a graph from having its slope. Oops, which we use the term m for, and b, which as you recall, is where x equals 0 when we have a point on the y-axis. So there's even a skeletal equation called y equals mx plus b. Uh, the book doesn't as fully develop this idea uh, as I would have liked it to, but I will make sure to relate the slope and the y-intercept in this equation, y equals mx plus b. Sometimes this is also known as a slope-intercept form. And when I say slope-intercept form, I'm also referring, remember we had another form that was ax plus by equals c that was called the standard form. Okay, and maybe just a, a little bit of review. Remember the first way they told us to draw a graph, uh, let's say that we have something like y equals 2x plus 1. I showed this in uh, the previous lesson, so I won't go all the way through it. But what we do is we, we were told to pick three values of x. Uh, if x is 0, y is 1. If x is 1, y would be 3. And if x is 2, y would be 5. Then we would plot those points and draw a line through them uh, with the arrowheads and so forth. And that would be the graph of y equals 2x plus 1. Well, in the next section, which is 3, 4, they told us that we can, um, if we have an equation of ax plus by equals c, or just an equation of y equals something, that uh, we could also find the intercepts. And remember, that method was 0 for x, and then find the y value, then let y equal 0 and find the x value. And this method, I guess, we'll call the uh, intercept method. Okay, so there's two methods to draw a graph, but the uh, the method that they're going to give us in three five, I think, is the one that's normally used in most cases. Although, as I said, when um, uh, you're asked to draw the graph of an equation, and we're using x and y's, but it can be relationships like pressure and volume, or uh, distance and rate, and in any number of um, of applications from chemistry or physics or something like that. Um, you can choose the method that you're most comfortable with. Anyway, um, over on page 190, they remind us a little bit about the way lines can mean. And I'm just going to put my own spin on this, because uh, we'll get there eventually. Uh, remember that I already mentioned that a line, when it leans to the right, is said to have positive slope. Now I'm looking at that line uh, on my screen, and it seems to, it's also called increasing. But as we move from left to right, the values get bigger. Uh, for example, here might be the point like uh, minus 2, 0. And up here might be, as I move from left to right, here might be the point uh, 2, 5. OK, so both the x and y values are uh, bigger at 2, 5. Anyway, um, now, the idea of slope, remember they told us that m is equal to slope. Notice how this line leans, but I could draw another line with positive slope and make it much uh, steeper. It's still got positive slope. But it, it's, um, it's going up more dramatically, or we say it has a bigger slope. Or I could draw another, uh, another set of coordinate axes with a slope that's very, very gentle. That looks like it might be a fractional slope. Maybe this one that I just drew here might be a slope of 4. And maybe the slope that I just drew here might be a slope of 1 third or something. 
Anyway, we need uh, we first have the term slope, and it, it, it that pertains to um, the behavior or the appearance of the graph. Okay, that's our definition so far. And, and I've said when the line leans to the right, it has positive slope. But we're also interested in the actual ratio of how steep the slope is. You know, we could compare that with a house that has a very steep roof or a house that has like a, um, uh, you can tell I'm a terrible drawer, but it might have a very gentle roof. Sometimes if you're in snow country, you see cabins with very steep roofs uh, to let the uh, snow not accumulate. So those are some things just to think about. We're interested in how much uh, or the ratio of how positive or how negative a slope is. OK, well, now that was positive slope. Let's uh, re do the same concept for a negative slope. Any line that leans to the left um, is gotten, or looks like this, if you will, has negative slope. And uh, again, I could draw another graph that has negative slope that's even more steep. Okay, so uh, this one would be decreasing more rapidly. I'll call this graph A and this graph B. Uh, the the decrease on graph uh, B is more rapid than the decrease or descent on graph A. OK, then remember we had two other special cases for the way a line can lean. A line can be flat. OK, so it's always going to have a slope, as we uh, mentioned before. When a line is flat, it is 0 for a slope. OK, I shouldn't have written Y there. I should have written M equals 0. Now, that may be the graph of y equals 2, uh, but that graph, whatever, uh, uh, we'll say it is y equals 2, but whatever uh, the actual number is, it definitely has a slope of 0. And if I threw a graph down the bottom parallel to the uh, x-axis um, and said that this is a graph of y equals negative 6, well, it still has a slope of 0. OK, and then the last one, and they actually introduced that a little further in this section, but I'm just going to talk about it now. Always helpful to see something a little bit ahead of time. Shortly, we're going to see there's one more way a line can lean and or can lie in the coordinate axis system. And whenever we have a graph of like x, remember we had a generic x equals a? Maybe this is the graph of x equals 4, for example. Well, whenever we have a vertical line, whether it's running through the uh, first and fourth quadrants or running through the uh, second and third quadrant, maybe this is the graph of x equals minus 5 or something like that, this turns out to have no slope which I'm not sure this book uses, uh, uh, but is it widely in use, no slope, or more, uh, more precisely, slope undefined. And that's a very important concept. Vertical lines are not actually allowed to have a slope. And as soon as we see the formula for slope and solve a few questions, we'll see exactly why uh, that's true. And it has something to do with dividing by 0 or the fact that we're not allowed to divide by 0, that it's undefined. Well, let's look over on page, or over uh, toward the bottom of page 190. And they just show us a line. By the way, that line has a positive slope. I can tell by just looking at it. And the line looks something like this. And what they've done on that line is they've chosen a couple of points. And of course, the points that they chose uh, ideally would be on the sharp corners of where the uh, graph paper uh, meets. We don't like to choose points that are not, in other words, if this represents the some graph paper here, we would like to choose points on the actual edges or vertices or where the point clearly cuts across the uh, little squares there, the grids uh, on the uh, vertices. That would be the edges 
or the sharp corners of the uh, graph. Anyway, this one we're just going to arbitrarily call x1 and y1. In other words, that's my first point, and they call that p1. And then we need a second point to find slope, and they put theirs up here. In other words, our second point, they call it x sub 2 and y sub 2. It's important to know those are subscripts, OK? Anyway, they tell us, now if you, you can think about this two ways, but what we're really doing is we're dropping down and then coming over. And when I drop down, I get like a change in the y direction. Remember, the y axis runs up and down. And then when I come back over to the graph again, this represents a change in the x direction. OK? So another way to think about this uh, would be when you're finding slope that it's the ratio of up-down divided by left-right. And that's a really simplistic way to think about it. But we need somehow to get these um, uh, ideas uh, solid in our mind here. So now they tell us um, uh, they have a whole bunch of different formulas, not a whole bunch of different formulas, but they tell us that slope is equal to vertical change. This is at, uh, toward the bottom of page 190. Divided by horizontal change. Or we notice how the, um, the graph on the y-axis runs up and down, or it rises. And on the x-axis, parallel to the x-axis, or back to our line here, it runs. So another thing we can say slope, I'll write the whole thing out here. Slope is equal to m equals change. In, I've already written the vertical change equals uh, divided by horizontal change. But it is also equal to rise, the up-down, divided by the run. So. How, are, how would we find, going back to their next diagram there, I'm trying to follow their theory on this instead of just giving you the formula. We go back to their generic graph where we had um, x1 and y1. And up here, we had x2 and y2. Well, if we wanted to find the ch vertical change, remember that the y coordinate is the one that runs up and down. For example, well, our, they don't give us any numbers yet. This is the idea. This is a little theory here now. But if we wanted the up and down change, we would subtract the y values. In other words, we'd go like the one up on top here, y2, take away y1. And if we wanted, subtract y1 to this, then if we wanted the x values, well, we've got an x value here, and we've got an x value here. And that's represented by, uh, by the way, this makes a little right triangle here. But the difference in the x's, here my, here's our x1, and here's our x2. The difference in x's would be found by going x2 minus x1. And that's where we get the idea of slope equals the vertical change divided by the horizontal change, which is equal to the rise over run, or y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And again, I remind you that the, those are subscripts there. Y subscript 2 take away Y subscript 1 uh, divided by X subscript 2 uh, subtract X subscript 1. So what this is going to boil down to is we're going to have a line. And they're going to give us a couple of ordered pairs on the line. And we're going to use this formula. And the formula will give us the ratio of the up-down divided by the left-right.
Now, if you have a graph of a, if you're using graph paper and actually have uh, a graph and you don't know the slope, you can actually count the slope off yourself. But let's look at their first um, example here. This is um, uh, halfway down page 191. It says we want the slope m, and they give us these two points. Uh, this is example one, by the way. They give us the points uh, 1, 2, and 3, 5. OK? Now, I'm just going to arbitrarily call the first ordered pair I come to x1 and y1, and that would make the second ordered pair I come to x2 and y2. And then I've got this formula for slope. I don't think I'll have to worry about making a sign error here, but it's very easy to make a sign error uh, with slopes because sometimes you have a negative uh, point or coordinate and you have to do minus a minus. Or sometimes you're subtracting two negatives. Anyway, this is pretty straightforward on this one. I plug in 5 for y2 and I plug in 2 for y1. So it's 5 subtract 2 on top. And my x2 is 3, which I've just circled there. And my x1 is 1. So in lowest terms, my slope is 5 take away 2 is 3, and 3 take away 1 is 2. So the line has a slope of 3 over 2. Now, that is equal to 1.5, but we like to leave things in fractional form, proper or improper. Okay. Uh, but we won't write it as 1 and a half, or we won't write it as 1.5. Now, let's go. Um, oh, I, I wanted to do one other thing here real quick. I think this is the right time to do it. What happens if we would have taken those exact two points, the 1, 2, and the 3, 5, and let's say that we would have called the 1, 2, coordinate 1, 2, x2 and y2, and the uh, 3, 5, let's say we would have let that be the x1 and the y1. In other words, I've transposed the coordinates, uh, what I've called them. OK, before, 1, 2 was the x1 and y1 coordinate, and now it's the x2 and y2 coordinate. Well, let's see what happens when we figure out slope. It would be, here's the formula again. It would be y2, which is now 2, take away y1, which is 5. OK, then we go to x2, which is now 1, subtract x1, which is 3. OK, so our slope would be minus 3. 2 take away 5 is minus 3, and 1 minus 3 is minus 2. But three, minus 3 over minus 2 is still a positive 3 halves. So this illustrates, as their little side note on the, uh, uh, in the margin there to the left on page 191, this illustrates that it doesn't matter which of the ordered pair we call x1 and y1 or x2 and y2. The slope, as long as we don't make a calculation error, will come out the same. OK, well, now let's see another important relationship about this slope. Let's actually go and uh, draw these two points. Remember, we had the two points uh, 1, and one 2, and uh, 2, 5, or sorry, 3, 5. Now, what we found out was if we drop down 3, it takes us 2 to get back to the graph. Or, yeah, and we normally, remember, we normally go up, down, and then left, right. OK, now, what if we would have dropped down 6? Well, then, it w in other words, if we drop two, twice as far down, uh, then it would have taken us twice as far to get back to the graph. 
or had we have dropped uh, down nine, which I didn't show a good enough graph for this, but had we dropped down nine, then it would have taken us 12 to get back to the graph. Excuse me, three over two, six over four, uh, nine over six. Okay, so notice that three over two and six over four and nine over six all are the same as three halves. Okay, well, three halves is, and by the way, if we come up after we subtract uh, with, um, had we used two different points, and we let's say we would have gotten six-fourths or nine-six, we would have, of course, reduced down to lowest terms, okay? And that would, uh, uh, that's the way we express slope, in lowest terms as a fraction, proper or improper, but not as a decimal. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said, well, sometimes um, we, uh, it's easier to write this. We will not, ex we like to express a fraction as improper or proper, but not mixed. In other words, we wouldn't give a fraction as four and a third. That's called a mixed number, and we wouldn't give it that way. If we had a slope, if the four and a third would be better off uh, turning, first of all, you wouldn't get four and a third, but that's the same thing as 13 thirds, okay? So we give it as a fraction, improper, or we can give it as a um, uh, three over two is improper, but two over three is a proper fraction. That's another way to express a fraction. Or if we got a slope of two, well, we'd probably throw a one under it as a reminder that we counted up, down first, and then left, right. Okay, so remember, three over two only applied to this graph. I used the two-thirds and the two over one just as examples of the way to report slope. The slope on the graph we just did is definitely three halves. Okay, well, let's do another one here. Oh, by the way, uh, it's the positive three halves. We knew immediately by looking at the graph it had positive slope. So, but we don't normally uh, write a positive in front of the slope. If it's positive, we just uh, assume it's, or we uh, don't need the uh, plus sign. Okay, well, let's look at their other one. Um, this is example two on the top of 192. Minus two, one, and five minus four. Okay, and we're supposed to find the uh, slope, and they remind us that it doesn't make any difference which one that we call the uh, x1 and x2. I'm sorry, the x1 and y1, or the x2 and the y2. So I'm in the habit of just the first one I come to, I call it x1 and y1, and then that leaves the other one to be x2 and y2. We don't really need to graph this to find the slope. Although, you, if you had the graph, you could actually count the slope off yourself. But anyway, let's find the slope of these two points. It would be y2, which is a minus 4, minus y1, which is a 1, divided by x2, which is a 5, subtract x1, which is a minus 2. So it's minus 4 minus 1, and 5 minus a minus 2. And uh, I'll write the slope formula again here so we can see the x2, or excuse me, the y2 was a minus 4, and then that subtract sign is from the formula there. And we're going to be subtracting 1. So that's why we have minus 4 minus 1. And x2 is 5, and then there's the minus from the formula, but we're subtracting a minus 2. Okay, anyway, when we do the math, minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5, and 5 minus a minus 2 is 7, so the slope turns out to be a uh, minus 5 sevenths. And, of course, we know it doesn't matter where the minus goes. 
Okay, and you can look at their graph there and see, first of all, we got a negative in front of the five-sevenths, and of course, the graph is leaning to the left. And we can see that the graph goes up and down by a difference of five. And it, um, uh, well, somewhere it, here's the way I would, this brings up another good point. And I will uh, try to explain this. The book says that we have a rise of minus 5 and a run of 7. Here's what I, the way I kind of like to think this. And I'll draw those two points here. OK, here was our point minus 2, 1. And then uh, 5 minus 4 down here. Now, they said our rise was minus 5 and our run was 7. Okay. The way, and that's true. You can say, well, I went down 5 and over 7. Uh, but here's the way I normally encourage students to think about this. Um, we went up or down 5 and then over 7 to get back to the graph. And this happens to be a slope that's leaning to the left. And that explains the negative. Okay, so um, either way that you think about it, the result is the same. But um, you could have also started here and gone up five and then over seven this way. As long as we're thinking about going up, down, and dividing that by the change left, right. Remember, slope is rise over run. Okay, but some people count the slope by going up and over rather than down and um, over. There's any way that you choose to uh, calculate the slope or count it off if you have graph paper, uh, the result is going to be the same. And clearly, when you look at the graph of example two, you can see that it's got a negative slope because the line is leaning to the left. Okay. Uh, now we're getting ready to uh, uh, for the big uh, payoff here in terms of what they've been trying to or what they're leading to here. And it turns out, this is uh, part B on page 192, about halfway down. If we know M and B, and remember M stands for slope. And B is the y-intercept. That's that place on the graph where x equals 0 and y has a value. Remember the way that we generically showed that. We had a line going through, and we called this point here 0B. Okay, So that's where, uh, it's a reminder of where that came from. But if we have a slope and a y-intercept, we can draw the graph. And there's a couple of different ways to think about this, and I'm going to show them both ways to think about it in uh, the examples that we do. And this is one of the things that requires some practice. And looking back at the examples and maybe watching um, uh, my examples uh, from the homework along with these examples again, and then also checking yourself on the solution key. But anyway, here is our. Um, task on example three. They have given us a graph. Here's the information they gave us. We have a slope of three halves, and we have a y-intercept of one. By the way, that's the same as x equals 0, y equals 1. It turns out if you have a slope and the y-intercept, that is all you need. Now, here is a point 0, 1. Remember, the top number, which in this case is 3, is the change up down. So from the point 0, 1, we could climb up 3. Okay, And then in order for, now remember, now that we've gone up 3, 
we need to uh, go over two to, for the change, uh, the horizontal change, or the change along the x-axis. And you, the first question that comes to mind is like, well, which way do I go? Because I can go left or right. Well, it turns out in order for us to get a positive three halves for a slope, we have to go to the right two. OK? So then we hook those two points up, and that is actually the graph. In fact, that is the graph of y equals 3 halves x plus 1. That's that y equals mx plus b form. Now, so in other words, here is our slope up 3 and over 2. And then I step back a bit and say, well, do I have a positive slope? And the answer is yes, because the line is leaning right. And for my slope of 3 halves, did I go up 3 and over 2? Uh, and that's true. So the ratio is there, as is the um, uh, order in which I did it. Now, the other thing, the other thing I need to show here real quick We'll go back with the exact same graph. Here is the point 0 minus 1, and we have a slope of 3 halves. Well, what I did is I went up 3 and over 2. Could I have gone down 3 and then over 2? And remember, the whole idea here is this slope is positive. Well, if I would have chosen to go down 3, then I would have had to have gone 2 in the, uh, to my left. And then when I hooked those up, that would indeed have given me a positive slope again. It's the exact same graph as I had before when I went up 3 and over 2. But you could also have gone down 3 and over 2. OK? So whenever you are asked to draw a given a point, I don't know why I wrote 0 minus 1 there. That's supposed to be 0, 1 for our uh, y-intercept. Um, so whenever you're given a point, like in this case, the point was 0, 1, you could, and, and the slope was 3 halves, you can go up 3 and over 2 to get that second point. Remember, two points determine a line. Or you can go down 3 and over 2. And the, uh, the way that you finish off or when you're going over depends on whether you went up or down originally. When I went up 3, in order to get a positive slope, I had to go 2 to the right. When I went down 3, I had to go 2 to the left in order to come up with a positive slope. OK, well, let's look at another one here. That was their example. They actually showed you the coordinates, uh, and I can do that real quick also. You, I'll use their example. If we're at 0, 1 on the y-axis, in other words, if that is our y-intercept, if we go up 3, that puts us at where y is equal to 4. And then if we go over 2, that's where x is equal to 2. OK? So this point is actually 4. Oops. This point is actually 2 for x and 4 for y, as they show you on uh, page 193. Um, of course, you'll be doing these with graph paper, but you really don't need to have that coordinate. Okay? If you count up 3 and then go over 2 and hook the points together, you're done. You don't really need the other to give the other coordinate. They're showing it to us for completeness, though. OK, and let me just, again, I want to do a couple of, uh, here's something that the book could have developed a little bit more. Let's say somebody gives us an equation. We have a skeletal equation of y equals mx plus b. And that's the same thing as if you get y by itself. 
Now, let's say that we have something like y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. Well, when you get y by itself, the number immediately in front of the x is the slope, and the constant after it is the uh, y-intercept. Okay, and if there isn't a number there, it's the same as 0, and then 0 becomes a y-intercept. But anyway, let's say that somebody says graph y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. Now, the way that they would tell us that is say draw a picture or graph, you've got a slope of 2 thirds and a b of minus 1. Okay? Uh, but that's the same, and this is what I was trying to point out, as y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. And if we were asked to graph that, we would simply go to minus 1 on the y axis, and we could either go up 2 and over 3, draw a line through them and be done, or we could have from our uh, y x from our uh, y intercept, we could have gone down two, and then it would have taken us three to get back to the graph. So, the remember for the slope of two thirds or any slope, the number on top is the uh, change up down, and the number on the bottom that was two thirds we had here. The number on the bottom is the change left right. Went up two, then it takes three to get back to the graph, or went down two, then it takes three in the other direction to get back to the graph. And clearly, I have done what they ask us to. This graph has a uh, y intercept of zero, negative one, and it has a slope of two thirds. Okay, well, now we're ready to look at example four. Now, example four is they've given us two points. They've given us the point 3 minus 1 and 3, 4. Well, I'm going to graph those in a minute. And if you look at the graph down below, you can see this may look a little different than what we've seen before. But uh, I'm going to call this x1 and y1. And I'll call this one x2 and y2. And I will figure out the slope of these two points. And it would be 4 minus a minus 1 divided by 3 minus 3. Well, we get 5 on top, but we get 0 on the de for our denominator. And we learned early on in chapter 1 that we're not allowed to divide by 0. In fact, uh, whenever we get a 0 in the bottom, we normally say it's undefined. So in terms of slope, we can say slope undefined, or also widely in use, is no slope. It's not really allowed to have a slope because um, we're dividing by 0. And now, if we just want to take a look and see why, because we mentioned this once before here, let's find where on our graph, this graph is just basically the graph of x equals 3. Here would be 3, 4 up here, where I've just written it there. And uh, 3 minus 1 is about right here. Anywhere on that vertical line, x is going to have a value of 3. Notice also that there's an x-intercept of 3, 0, but there's no y-intercept. Okay, So this is in the form of x equals a, and it just happens to turn out that a is equal to 3 here. So uh, any graph that's vertical will have a, uh, uh, we will say its slope is either slope undefined or no slope. And we've seen a really good way now to understand why we say it's not allowed to have a slope or it's slope undefined, because we're dividing by 0, which is not allowed. OK. So finally, uh, oh, by the way, I think I'll just do for completeness here. Uh, 
let's say that they give us the point of one, four, and uh, two, now we'll say uh, five, four, and find the slope. Well, as always, I call the first one I come to x1 and y1, and that makes the second one x2 and y2. So let's find out what the slope of these two points are. And as a matter of fact, I think I'll just go ahead and graph these two points right now. 1, 4 would be about right here, and 5, 4 would be about right here. Well, that to me looks like it's a graph of y equals 4. Okay, it's flat, or you might recall that the slope is 0 here, but let's find out why. It would be 4 take away 4 on top. Then on the bottom, we would have 5 take away 1. And that would give us 0 over 4, which is just 0. Well, any time that you have a graph that is flat or parallel to the x-axis, immediately it's going to have a slope of 0. Just like any time that you have a graph that's vertical or parallel to the y-axis, it's going to have an undefined slope, or we say slope undefined or no slope. And they have um, pretty much summarized this. Uh, over in that green box on page 194. This is when it goes through the origin, y equals mx. Okay. By the way, isn't y equals mx the same thing as y equals mx plus 0? Uh, so whenever you have something like y equals uh, 3 halves x, they don't show anything else, you can assume that its y-intercept is 0. We could easily find that, by the way. If y equals 3 halves x, the moment we let x equal 0, then y equals 0, because 3 halves of 0 is 0. Anyway, keep in mind this y equals mx plus b because it's a very handy way uh, to uh, graph, and we can use that uh, formula also to work it backwards uh, in, the, in later sections. Anyway, uh, I'll finish that off on the top of the next page and do some homework examples. Okay, goes through the origin there, y equals mx, and they tell us that the uh, slope, uh, it will have a slope, by the way, and the slope will not be equal to 0, but that the y and x intercept are both zeros. Okay, then we have this situation here. Their next one is where we just have a line that's parallel, and it intercepts the uh, x-axis. And then they told us that's a generic graph of x equals a. And then they tell us that there's no y-intercept. And they point out also um, that, oh, by the way, they whatever that a is depends on that uh, x-intercept there. And they tell us that a is not equal to 0. a equals some number. And then finally, the last uh, one, and we've talked several times about these, would be the line that runs flat or cuts through the y-axis. We call that graph y is equal to b. And we said this is the y-intercept. Okay, And notice that there's no x-intercept there. And we also say that b is not equal to 0. b is a number, like maybe b is uh, 5. So this would be the graph of y equals 5, if that were so. OK. Anyway, what we're going to do is I have some um, uh, questions picked out on page 194 and 195. And I think they'll be really helpful to um, uh, get all these ideas working together. 
Here is question four. It's a slope question. And again, I personally just like to call the first pair I come to x1 and y1, and it makes the uh, second of the ordered pair x2 and y2. So using our slope formula, it would be 2 take away 3 on top and 5 take away 1 on the bottom. Okay, so that 2 take away 3 is minus 1, and 5 take away 1 is 4. So our slope is minus 1 fourth. Okay, now uh, the other thing they want us to do is to um, uh, draw a picture, to plot the pair of points. In other words, 1, 3 would be about right here and uh, 5, 2 would be about right here. And even though my graph is off a little bit, whenever I go up or down 1, then it would take me 4 to get back to the graph. So if I went down 1, it would take me 4 to get back to the graph. Or if I went up 1, it would take me 4 to get back to the graph, to that point again. Okay. Now, we remember I like to uh, interpret the negative sign as the fact that the line leans to the left, or that we have negative slope there. Uh, when you draw this on graph paper, you will be able to actually count off nicely the uh, uh, the up and down because it's gridded. Okay. How about on question eight? I'll just go ahead and I won't draw the graph, but I will figure out the slope. I'm sure we can plot the points without too much problem. OK, uh, 8, we have the point minus 3 minus 1 and 1, 4. So x1, y1, x2, y2. y2 minus y1 would be 4 minus a minus 1. I like to use parentheses because it cuts down on sign errors. And x2 minus x1 would be 1 minus a minus 3. So 4 minus a minus 1 would be 5, and 1 minus a minus 3 would be 4. The slope on uh, number 8 is 5 fourths. Okay. Well, the next one I want to do is question 14. It says, in each of the following problems, graph the line with the given slope and y-intercept. Now, oops, got a little ahead of myself there. The slope is equal to 3 fourths, and the b is equal to negative 2. I would just like to remind you that this actually defines the equation y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. Okay, and if you were to let x equal 0, then y would equal minus 2, and that's how we would get the y-intercept of minus 2. Remember, b is the y-intercept, and the slope is 3 fourths. <laughs> Pardon me. Remember, whenever we get y by itself like this, the number in front of the x turns out to be the slope. Now, we don't need to know that, but it's so helpful, and I'm, um, uh, it's usually shown at this time in the, uh, uh, in, well, it was shown in the previous text like this. We're dealing with a new edition now. I'm sure we'll come on to it later. But anyway, let's just go do 14 the way they want us to here. We had m is 3 fourths, and b is negative 2. So we go to 0, negative 2, and then we have our choice. Okay, We may go up 3, 
and then I would have to go four to the right to get a positive slope. Remember, this is a positive three-fourths. Or I could go down three, and then I would have to go four to the left to get that other point to hook up for a positive slope. Okay, I'm actually going to do it both ways. I'll go up three. And I would have to go four this way to get that other point. And then there's my two points, and I could hook them together and draw the line. And I'll remind you again that this is really the graph y equals 3 fourths x minus 2, although they haven't officially told us that yet. But don't forget, you could have also gone down 3, and then it would have taken you 4, then you would have gone 4 in the left direction also. And that would have been the other way uh, that you could have found that second point. It takes two points to determine a line. OK, uh, let's also take a look at um, uh, question 20. Question 20 is m is negative 2 and b is 4. Well, remember, there is a negative 2 uh, is the number on, in the denominator. We can easily turn that into slope form by throwing a 1 under it. So we go up or down 2 and over 1. And our b is negative 4. And again, just as a reminder, that is our y-intercept, meaning it has the coordinate of uh, 0, 4. And I will tell you one other reminder here that this is really the graph of y equals minus 2x plus 4. But we don't need all that information in, for this homework question, but that's what this implies. Anyway, let's draw a picture of it here. We start off at 0, 4. Well, we have our choice. I, if I go decide to go up 2, then I would have to go 1 in to, the, uh, to my left to end up with two points that, when I hook them together, give me a negative slope. But I could have also gone down 2. Then it would have taken me 1 to the right to get that other point. Okay, So I have two choices each time. It slopes a negative 2. And I find the y-intercept. That's my first point. Then I need one more point. And I can find it by going up 2 and over 1 to the left. And when I hook those together, it gives me a negative slope. Or I could have gone down 2 and over 1 to the right, which would have also yielded a negative slope. That's why it's very important for you to check your uh, work on these, or check with the uh, book, the odd ones in the book. And I've mostly only given you odd ones here. And if your lines are not leaning in the right direction, then go back and uh, uh, try to understand where you should have gone uh, in the other direction. OK. Um, now, the next thing that they want us to do is, and it's going to be a little harder for me to do this, So, but this is question number uh, 24. Um, they have the point 0, 4, and they have the y-intercept, which is 2, 0. And we have the point 4 minus 4. OK. Uh, well, anyway, even though my graph doesn't look exactly like theirs, it's OK. Now, you can actually count, but um, let's see what they want us to do. They want us to find out what the uh, slope and the y-intercept is. Well, that won't be too hard to find the y-intercept, because we can tell that it's 4. OK. Now, to find the slope, what we can do is we say, well, and, and by the way, 
we know the slope is immediately negative because the line is leaning to the left. The simplest thing to do would just say, well, if I go down 4, it takes me 2 to get back to the graph. And in lowest terms, 4 over 2 is the same as just 2 over 1, which would be a negative 2 over 1, or just plain old negative 2. Okay, and when, if somebody gave us a slope of negative 2, we would throw a 1 under it to use it as um, in slope terms. Now, don't forget there's another way you could have found out the uh, slope here. If you were at 4, negative 4, in order to, let's say we were using this point here, which is 2, 0, you would have to go up 4 and then over 2. But 4 over 2 is also 2. Okay, and it happens that it will be a negative because the line is leaning to the left. Or you could have even done this. You could have climbed up from negative 4 all the way up to positive 4, which would have been a uh, climb of 8. And then it would have taken you 4 to get back to the uh, graph again. And 8 over 4 is also equal to 2. But in slope terms, we would call this a negative 2 because our line is leaning to the left, which means negative slope. But the simplest way to do this is just drop down 4 and go over 2. And keep in mind that the slope's negative, so the slope is negative 2. OK, uh, I've got two other questions here, um, or maybe three other questions, depending or examples that I want to work from the homework. Here's question 28. Graph the line that has an x-intercept of 2. By the way, that immediately tells us that the coordinate is 2, 0. Um, and the y-intercept, oh, I'm sorry, 28. Yeah, x-intercept is 2 and the y-intercept of negative 3. And that implies this. So we have to uh, graph this. And even though I can't graph it exactly, I can count out. I can count up and down uh, mentally. Uh, the point 2, 0 is right here. And the point 0 minus 3 is right here. Okay, well, the first thing I notice when I hook them up is that it's a positive slope. Now, how about this? I can go up 3, and then it takes me 2 to get back to the graph. Oops. Okay, up 3 over 2, that's the same as a slope of 3 halves. Or I can drop down 3, and then it takes me 2 to get back to the graph. Either way, it's going to be a slope of 3 halves. And it's fairly straightforward to count it off once you have drawn the graph, because you have the intercepts. OK. Um, now, here's 32. And this is probably the most important question here, because I can relate it again to y equals mx plus b. 32 says, draw the line, graph the line y equals 2x plus 3. Sorry about that, minus 2x plus 3. OK, and then it says, name the slope and the y-intercept by looking at the graph. Well, I'm going to tell you ahead of time that this is in the form of y equals mx plus b. So I know ahead of time that the slope is negative 2, and b is 3. And that implies 0, 3. OK? Because um, they've given it to us with y by itself. But let's say that um, we don't know that. And so they gave us y is equal to minus 2x plus 3. And then we have to get a couple of points. I'm only going to use a couple here. I'll plug in 0 and 1. 
I should use three points, but two is going to be enough for me right now. Anyway, if x equals 0, y is equal to 3. So our first point would be 0, 3. And if x equals 1, then minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, and minus 2 plus 3 is 1. So I have the points now 0, 3, and 1, 1, and those I'm going to graph. Oops, I should be about right here, actually. Uh, I hate it when I make a little mistake like that, but if this is so important, I'll just grab another screen here. And I'll do a better job with the graph. And remember, this is the graph of y equals minus 2x plus 3. And that should be enough. So here is 0, 3. So our y-intercept, as a matter of fact, by definition. And here is 1, 1. And here's the line that goes through them. Okay. Now remember, uh, what I did was I let x equal 0 and then y equal plus 3, and then I let x equal 1 and y equal 1. And I'm going to label those points also, just because this is our next to last question here. Well, we should be able to count off the slope on this now. And the first thing that, oh, by the way, we already know the b is 0, 3, or just plain old 3. And uh, notice again that this equation is in the form of y equals mx plus b. So it's not a surprise that the b is equal to 3 there. And we also made mention that the fact that the number in front of x is a negative 2. And we said when the, an equation is in the form of y equals mx plus b, that the number in front of x was the slope. And that's what we're going to verify right now. Is this slope negative 2? OK, uh, because that was the number in front of the original equation. If I here at 0, 3, I, and it's a negative slope, I would have to drop down 2 and then over 1 to get back to the line. So the slope is indeed negative 2. Now, remember what they asked us to do. They asked us to, uh, on 32, to draw the graph and then name the slope in the y-intercept. OK, so we drew the graph of y equals minus 2x uh, plus 3. And as soon as we do, drew the graph, we discovered that m was negative 2 and b was 3. The very same number for m is in front of the x, that's a negative 2, and the constant afterwards, that 3, turns out to be the b. That is always the case in a question like this. And just to show one more time, and this is the last one, if somebody gave us y equals uh, 3 fourths x plus uh, 2, for example, and said, draw a graph of that, well, you could, and remember, this is in the form of y equals mx plus b. You could pick out, like for x, maybe 0, 4, and negative 4, plug them in and find out what the corresponding y values are. Or now that we've learned that the number in front of x is the slope and that the constant afterwards is the b, and if we don't see one there, it's understood to be 0, we can just graph this. In other words, we could go to where b is equal to 2, 
that implies the y-intercept at 0, 2, and we could go through it with a slope of 3 fourths. That means down 3 and over 4 to get our other point, or up 3 and over 4. It's up to you. OK. Uh, you can follow along with what the book has, but I, um, I wanted to show you that relationship because it's so close, and it is normally uh, shown at this time. And I think the problem that we just did uh, prior to the little example here was meant us to, for us to see that. OK, the last question I wanted to do, uh, no, actually, it's next to last because I'm going to do 38 also. It's, uh, it's a, basically a math question with slope. It says, find y if the line through 1, y, and uh, 7, 3 has a slope of 6. Okay. In other words, what they're telling us now is we have this equation, slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we want this slope to be 6, and they have given 3 out of the 4 coordinates that we need to find it. In other words, we have like x1. I don't really know what y1 is, the way I'm labeling them here. And then we had x2 and y2. So we can find this out algebraically, though, because they told us we want the slope to be, uh, I'm sorry, the find the, oh, yes, if find the y if the slope through the line 1, comma y and 7, comma 3 has a slope of 6. So since we want it to have a slope of 6, I plug in 6 for slope. For y2, I plug in 3, and then I plug in y into the equation, since that's the missing number there. And then on the bottom, x2 minus x1 is 7, take away 1. And this gives us 6 equals 3 minus y over 7 minus 1, or 6. OK, so then we can multiply both sides by 6 to get the 6 out of the denominator. And that gives us 36 is equal, here it cancels, to uh, 3 minus y. And then, of course, the last thing I do would be subtract 3 from both sides. And I would end up with, uh, oh, excuse me. Um, I've got a minus y equals there. So I subtract 3 from both sides, and that yields a minus y equals 33. OK, then of course the last thing I do is divide both sides by minus 1. So y, turning it around, would equal minus 33. And now I'm going to check that out real quick on the top of the next page here. OK, if we had the point 1 and minus 33, rather large uh, negative number, but it works, uh, and 7, 3, and we applied the slope formula, would we get a slope of 6? Well, let's find out. Again, the x1, y1, x2, y2. So in our formula, we would have 3 minus a minus 33 divided by 7 minus 1. And 3 minus a minus 33 would be 3 plus 33, or 36. 7 minus 1 is 6, and 36 over 6 does equal 6. So it would check out. OK, last question, 38. We sh hopefully can do this at sight. By that, I mean without graphing. 38, we have three equations. We have y equals 3 halves. And we have y equals 3. 
I'm sorry, in 38 we have x equals 3 halves. And then finally we have y equals 3 halves x. And we're supposed to give the slope of each one. Well, any graph of y, you may recall, is flat or parallel to the x-axis, so it has a slope of 0. Any graph of x runs vertical, and we saw that when we subtracted out the x values in the bottom of the slope formula, remember the x2 minus x1, that that turned into 0 for a vertical line, and we're not allowed to divide by 0, so this one has undefined slope. And y equals 3 halves x, the number in front of x is our slope, as, they, as they've uh, told us, so this one has a slope of 3 halves. So 0 slope for y equals 3 halves, that's a y-intercept, uh, basically, or it's just a graph of y equals 1 and a half. And for x equals 3 halves, that's a vertical line that has a slope of undefined. It's not allowed to have a slope. And for y equals 3 halves x, the slope is 3 halves. OK, please uh, approach this chapter careful, this section carefully and work through it. Uh, hopefully, you'll find these lectures and example, uh, my examples and homework examples helpful. Um, and you also have the solution key. And of course, I'm available for help. Thank you.